So I'm going to try to give a as comprehensive tutorial as I can from everything I understand about the Behringer X32, the digital console mixer. I will first preface that I am not an audio engineer, uh, have no professional training. Anything that I understand is really just by looking at YouTube videos, and I will uh, reference a couple of uh, popular YouTube channels, which I did learn a majority of. But at least for to start, this board is broken into various different sections. The first section that we'll just mention here is you will see the various inputs across here. These are your channel strips. The X32 has 32 channels, hence the name. And to access uh, those two different rows, uh, you uh, first would press this button here, uh, 1 through 16, or you would press the 17 to 32. And by doing that, we can see here that the faders are at different levels. And then up here, within each of these channels, uh, an instrument is plugged into it or a microphone. And up here, you do the manipulations of processing it, applying enough gain in order to get a proper signal and whatnot. Over here, the next portion we have is the uh, is the console screen where you can see everything we're seeing so um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later and then down here we have the various mix buses which are the way the best way I, I think about it is uh, separate auxiliary uh, outputs that uh, you can potentially manipulate to be different from the main house mix which is uh, this channel right over here. To start with, um, I will access the uh, the computer channel right here. So you can see right over here that uh, we are getting a little bit of a signal anywhere from between in this green zone as it blips into the orange part, which is around negative 18 uh, decibels or dB. The reason why this is important is that right over here, you see this portion that says clip. When it comes to digital audio, if the signal has too much gain, it will distort and you will hear this kind of uh, uh, clipping, which just sounds just, just like garbage, just as a you know kind of sounds which is hurts the ears and is really inaudible and you uh, lose fidelity the logical question then is uh, when you have multiple audio sources how do you balance that when you're mixing you're basically playing traffic hop if you think of the main bus mix as the major highway everyone's trying to get onto it you have over here you are trying to manage each relative level where how loud each channel is or how much gain each channel has and then how much uh, influence and how open the gate for each one of these uh, signals is and then you put them all together and obviously if you run all these channels to way too hot then the end result will be the main mix will be uh, way too hot and clipped and nobody wants that how do we start that off to begin with so we have the computer over here what we'll first do is uh, I already have this set right here to having that meter right there but and if we select this here you can also see here if we go to meters over here we can see that this is showing the same thing so generally speaking over here you have your gain knob I have it set to about here so if I were to turn this all the way down here if you were to play through the PA systems, you wouldn't hear anything. So the first thing you want to do is turn up the gain to a degree where you can start seeing the majority of yellow. So we're turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. So we have a little bit of yellow right there. Anywhere if you can get between around negative 18 is generally a pretty good gain that you're amplifying the signal. And as a result, it gives you a reasonable amount of headroom. And this is probably a little bit easier to see here. You don't want to hit that red part. You want a, a little bit uh, in that halfway zone. The transition point for the yellow, the, the, the green to yellow is where you generally want to be. When you get to the actual channel over here, I'm going to stop the music so that we don't um, end up getting copyright issues. Generally speaking, you want everything at the zero decibel uh, point, which is a concept that's called unity. Basically, you're, you're not boosting the signal. You're not reducing the signal in any way you're setting all the initial parameters from the gain. So then from here, if I look at the at the praise team, we have everything basically close to here. And there's a couple advantages to this. One, everything from when you set the proper gain, you don't have to adjust it too much. And you can see here how tight these intervals are here. It's on a logarithmic scale. So the movement that you would need from here to here and to enact it to a change, even a slight move would, would result in huge changes. But over here, you can see the spread is quite large so that if you were to uh, move it even from here to here, it's not a significant change. So you, it gives you a little bit more fine-tuned control. And then also too, when everything is uh, relative to one another, sometimes the, the what you need is not to necessarily make something louder, but to make everything else a little bit lower than that. So that's some of the theory behind there. This is a, a, an average typical worship session that we would have. We can see here that Dicho's uh, mic is pretty close to even and then Jane's here was just a little bit lower. Angie's a little bit, is a little bit louder than from there. During the Sunday worships when the praise team is playing, I'm always playing with these, changing these relatively up and down. And so you would 
repeat the same process applying the the right gain usually if you're a volunteer here a lot of these gains and everything are already set so there's not really a whole lot that you necessarily need to do so that's the most important thing there and then of course when you get to start the the unit up it's probably going to be lower down here we just do this just so that we don't blast anyone's ears when they first come on so you can turn this up to to, to unity to zero and then everything should be uh, set in balance from there the next part i'll just go into is this so we are selecting every single channel we've we have it at a good a reasonable gain setting from here and also in here and uh, these are again called the faders uh, if i didn't already say it this is the part here that you don't really have to know or really get into super involved this is more of the processing area where you uh, take the raw signal from the mic or the instrument and you can apply various manipulations to it to if you want to change something so at least walking you through this right here is for the low cut or the high pass filter what that means and so if you push this on and off i'll bring it to this screen over here if i uh, if I turn this low cut filter on and off, any frequencies within a sloping curve starting from around uh, 100 hertz and lower, you're going to eliminate that signal altogether. Now, you may the reasonable question you need to ask is, well, why would you want to do that? A lot of the signals less than 100 hertz is really just like like a rumbling kind of sound. It doesn't have a lot of very useful audio information there. And as a result, during the worship service or the live stream, it's just going to sound really muffled. So as a result, since it's not useful, we cut out a lot of that i know i'm jumping around a little bit off the place but part of the theory when it comes to audio engineering is the question is are you what are you trying to solve here subtractive eq is usually the way to go because the the more you take out the left that's remaining just has a more opportunity to shine right and come out through more a little more clearly and then if you wanted to view some see so see that specifically you could hit the view button and then you see how this uh, screen over here changes the next part is the uh, compressor is probably the most important one here so if we look at this compressor when we press when you press that button it looks like this essentially and maybe a better example is if i go to the pastors so if i go to p john's over here and again to get get to that channel you hit select and that's how that brings that up so at least over in this side uh, and the reason why this was crazy is because um when p john's mic is off it just makes this crazy static if you're hearing a typical pastor they'll be very loud and everything like this and then they'll be very quiet so as a result a lot of that unevenness it makes it difficult because if you set the gain for the quiet parts and then the then the loud parts will clip as a result the the idea that we have here is that the compressor once you achieve beyond a certain threshold over here seeing about 28 decibels in a ratio of three to one meaning that if it goes about nine decibels above 28 what will end up happening then it will reduce by uh, reduce the gain by about negative uh, three dB and then make the loud parts just uh, a little bit quieter. Over here, we have what we call makeup gain, meaning that the softer parts are boosting by around three dB. So as a result, the dynamic range of the audio uh, of the loudest and the softest parts becomes a little bit more uh, narrowed and compressed the relative perceived loudness actually increases the next part here that we will see is for the equalizer so i'll say we'll just do a decho so when we see over here we have the low kit filter from before and right over here we have at around 150 hertz is a reduction of around uh, 5 db the reason why why we have that is that at around 150 kilohertz you have a lot of room echo and a boxy sound and that can make the voice sound muffled so that's where that's why it that out right over there and so the, as a result since you get rid of some of that boominess it may sound a little thinner but as a result it it sounds a little more intelligible and clear and then on this part over here our high shelf which is boosting the signals from around by 2000 hertz and, and above that's well and good but how would we make these adjustments let's just say that you're working with one of the, the pastor mics you probably wouldn't want to do this but let's say that i oh i want to uh, boost their uh the the bass and give them more of a bassy sound so what you would do is then you would go to one of the pastor mics go over here you would first then go onto this side over here you would then choose whichever selection point you can see here that when you press these one of these uh, highlights and changes we would probably start off with one of the low ones and then we would turn this gain knob down this way and as you can see when we do this we see that you get more or you get uh, a decrease in the signal right there the reason why that looks gray is because i did not hit the equalizer so you would hit equalizer and that's where you see there and then if you wanted to make it more skinny um, you would then play with the Q or the bandwidth there. So you can see I'm, by turning it to the left, I'm making this thing a little bit skinnier. So you're uh, getting more of a targeted effect. But if you were to uh, turn it to the right, you would get more of a wider spread. And then over here, if you wanted to change that point and say you don't want it to be 150, 
you would then manipulate this left and right, and you can see here that this changes where uh, where you're cutting out the signal. So there's a popular concept called search and destroy where you are looking where you may instead turn up the gain. You will have it, have it uh, really uh, high and you'll make the peak very narrow and then you'll just sweep it side to side looking for frequencies that just don't seem very good and then eliminate them from there. But we're not gonna worry about that today, but that's just an example of how you use the equalizer. Now for the high shelf, so how did we uh, do that before? So we then hit the high part here, that then goes to this number four over there. And this right now is set to this thing. Uh, you can then change the mode that you want it. So this is a shelf, this is a, a cut, but we have to go to the shelf. And then from here, from around two to 4,000 hertz region, that's where you get a lot of the airy notes and the sparkle behind the voices, what they saw, say often. So if you then turn up the gain a little bit, you would then give it a little bit extra oomph, so to speak, and then you can then uh, spin your frequency knob here and then you can see you can then sweep it in like that so we're not going to worry about that right now but i'm just showing you examples of how um, that can be done the uh, next part here with an individual channel is this main bus here so when you go into every single individual channel over here if you press one of these buttons here uh, let's just say that you uh, actually this is probably a good example so if we look at the at the uh at the electric guitar uh, right over there at the electric guitar on channel nine you can see that i have this panned pretty far to the left, uh, not all the hard left, but if I look, if I press on to one of the microphones here, this is the dead, dead center. What that basically means is of those speakers, the left one over here and the uh, right one over here, what that is doing is that it is diverting some of the signal either evenly, if it's in the middle between the left and the right uh, speaker, or if in the case of the electric keyboard or the electric uh, guitar, this is panning this one over here more to the left so you're getting more out of the uh, left speaker than in the right speaker now a reasonable question is well why would you want to do that it just kind of goes back to the traffic cop example that i said before is that when you have so many signals coming through all these various music and instruments and everything there's a crowding of various frequencies that you can hear so for instance a lot of the frequencies between the acoustic guitar which is uh, somewhere in this in this region over here these also match a lot with what the the keys have it's also in the same region here so when you have multiple frequencies all competing for the same space it just gets crowded and it just sounds muddy and you can't necessarily get a lot of uh, clarity so as a result if you're panning things to the left or the right you can get a little bit of instrument separation and it can make things sound a little more clear and you also make your soundscape sound a little bit wider and as a result um, can just be more pleasing to the ear uh, so that's one of the reasons there now generally speaking uh, the main vocalist, uh, say if D chosen, uh, D chosen uh, is, the, is singing the main, and then you have uh, Jane and Angie uh, singing uh, backup. Um, you know, D Cho may be uh, you know panned in the middle, but then for Jane, I may have her uh, pan more towards uh, towards the left there, and then Angie pan more to the right. So as a result, uh, when they're up there, you would hear. Uh, David in the middle, you would hear Jane more on the left and Andrew more on the right. So instead of crowding that space, you're splitting you're, you're splitting the frequencies, so to speak. And as a result, you can hear everyone actually a little bit more clearly. 